In this short video presentation, I'm going to graph scatter plots, uh, discuss correlation principles, and run regression analysis. And then I'm going to give a brief description on analyzing the data and then using it for predictive purposes. Now, regression analysis is a statistical technique where one or more independent explanatory factors affect some variable of interest or dependent or outcome variables. And if you look at the computer screen, you're going to see hours in the swamp, weight of the frog catcher, and the numbers of beers consumed will be my independent or explanatory. And they're trying to explain my dependent or outcome of the numbers of frogs caught. Now, if this is a real study, which it's not, there's probably some other vari variables that are very important to explain frogs caught, like, for instance, the experience of the frog catcher, the season, rain, day, night. But we're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to use it just to show the relationship uh, from a regression analysis purpose. Now, what I went ahead and do, normally I would just go ahead and run my regression analysis using these three as my x variables, and this is my y variable, but I want to kind of show you why when you run it, how to read which one was rejected, which one wasn't. Now, I went ahead just for the fun of it uh, and went to insert, and I inserted a scatter plot and a trend line under layout here. And this graph here has shown me the hours in the swamp and just the frogs caught. So you can see here's my y variable, my frogs caught, my dependent or outcome variable, and here's my x variable, the numbers of hours in the swamp. And you can see a relationship here, uh, a positive relationship. The more hours, the more frogs that I've caught. So that's actually uh, a good uh, explanatory. The number of hours can explain the number of frogs caught. Then the second one, I did it again for the second one. It's called correlation. Uh, that number would be close to 1 because they're, they're correlated positively. Now if I come down here, this one shows no relationship whatsoever. And this one is basically telling me, again, the numbers of frogs caught and looking at the weight of the frog catcher. And you can see there really is no relationship. So when I do run my regression analysis, which I'll show you in just a minute, I'll show the number to look at and why that was rejected. Now the third one here is showing uh, a linear relationship as well, except this one's a negative one. It's the more frogs, I'm sorry, the more beers consumed here, the fewer frogs that I caught, uh, which is, here's my outcome variable, my explanatory variable. So it explains it, but it, from the standpoint of uh, the more fro the more beers you drink, the the less frogs that you catch. Now, <coughs> I went ahead and ran the regression analysis, and to run regression analysis here, all you have to do, and I, I went ahead and uh, you can remove the weight here, and I removed the weight and I ran the regression analysis. But to to run the regression analysis, if you've already added in SPS or in Excel, all you have to do is go to the data and data analyze, and there's regression here and hit OK, and it's going to say, OK, give me your Y ranges. Well, my Y range would just nothing, be nothing more than my frog, so I just grab this here and pull down. And then my X would be here. Now, in SPSS, you can just pull it right across the data and run it in SPSS if you're using SPSS. And I hit OK, and it's going to analyze it. It's already done. Uh, I don't need to. It's a sheet 3 here. But uh, that's how you'd run it. Um, now, let's take a look at it. And here's the same thing I just got, um, but opened up a little bit. We can see it. Uh, and I, again, let's, well, actually, let's first go to one when I left the weight of the frog catcher. When I left the weight of the frog catcher, that's the x variable number 2. And if we look closely here at the p-value, if that p-value, which is nothing more than 1 minus the confidence level, so 1 minus the confidence level, 0.95, if the p-value is greater than 0.5, it'd be thrown out. It's called the alpha. If it was at a 90% confidence interval, interval, it'd be 0.1. And you can see that number is actually greater than that. It's 0.11. So I would reject or throw that one out. Now, these other two here, if you look at them, are very small numbers. That e to the 0.9 means I have to multiply that number by 10 to the negative 9. So these two numbers are very, very low. So that's why uh, I would reject it. But then again, you can come back to the data and you can see why it was rejected. There is no relationship between uh, those. Now, let me go back once more and uh, let's look at uh, how we use it for predicted purposes. Now, I ran it again this time without the way of the frog catcher. And I get some numbers here. This is referred to as the population regression function. Uh, and if you take a look at it, it gives me my constant here, and it gives my slope coefficient. So I can take these numbers here and create my population regression function, which is right here, is my y hat. I'm going to try to predict using what's referred to as a b naught. I can put a hat over it to b1, x1, b2, x2. And this is an, uh, an error variable. I'll get that in just a second. So if you take a look at my line here, it's nothing more than, here it is, there's the 
uh, constant, and then there's the uh, 362 and the 168. And basically, and it's a negative number because it, it's a negative relationship. The more beers, and that's the hours, and that's my predicted. So if I had a person that came to me and says, well, I'm going to spend 12 hours, and I've probably consumed two beers, I can use the predicted purposes by this equation. So I put my 12 here as my x1. I put my as x2, my two beers, and I do the math, and I get about 121 frogs. We use this regression analysis a lot of times to predict cost and management. Now, let me go back and do a little uh, more explaining uh, on one thing here. Uh, let's go back to analysis. Uh, another important number with your analysis is this adjusted, uh, or this r squared here, 0.85. Very important. Let me go back and try to explain that uh, uh, with the data. I'm actually just going to use this one right here if I was explaining just this one here. I'm going to draw a line about right here and I'm going to call that line the X bar or the mean of the number of frogs caught. And if we take a look at one of these data points, uh, let's look at this data point right here. And we can see this data point right here and here's my best line of fit has a is a distance from this best line of fit here, and this is a distance here. Well, if I were to sum up all these numbers here above that, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, above that, that would be considered something referred to as a SSE, the sum of the errors. And if I go from the mean, this is more of expected, this is the SSR. Now, if I guess I can sit there and say that the, the uh, what this R squared is, R squared is maybe a portion of the total variation explained. So you would want a higher one because a lower R squared would tell me that there's a very high SSE uh, or it's, it's more dispersed, if you will. So we like a high R squared. And in this case, my analysis does show a quite high R squared, about 85%. So it says the portion of the total variation uh, of the frogs caught, 85% can be explained from the hours in the swamp and the beers consumed. Uh, lastly, I just want to mention that error function. This error function has nothing to do with the SSE. This is a theoretical thing. It cannot be measured. It says if there was a real data, this is the difference between the real data and the data I have. Of course, we won't know the real data because uh, it's in theory. Well, I hope this helps a little bit explaining uh, a little bit about um, regression analysis, how to calculate regression analysis, and how to use it as a predictive model.